right? Yeah, this is good. I'm not, you know, unlike the, the talkers yesterday who are really professional and good, I'm not like that. I'm not very professional. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, I tend to, you know, sort of awkward marine biologists. I'm far more comfortable in the company of whales than I am with humans. So um, it's good that this is a little bit more personal. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm Andy. I work for Ocean Alliance. It's a marine mammal uh, research and education group uh, based in the States. Um, I spend most of my career so far studying threats to whales and dolphins. I'll just say quickly, whales, dolphins and porpoises are all technically whales. So if I refer to them all as whales, I, I mean all of them. I mean whales, dolphins and porpoises. They're all part of the same whale family. So uh, yeah, we're, at a, we're obviously at a fish conference, well, event. Why is it important to talk about whales and dolphins? Um, why do I think it's important to broaden the picture here? What are the links between whales and overfishing? You know, it might seem obvious, but hopefully, I'll uh, I'll hopefully I'll, I'll show you that the links are a little bit more, uh, a little bit closer than you might have otherwise thought. And um, yeah, and so so obviously, if we're depleting the ocean food chains, then that's inevitably going to have an impact on all the animals above and below those animals. So tuna whatever, it all impacts whales and dolphins and all that stuff. You can, you can already tell that I'm not used to speaking. Wait, I'm just uh, struggling to see where I am here. Hmm. Come backwards. Yeah, I know, sorry. Yeah, I'll talk about, so I'll quickly run over some of the threats to whales. So there are quite a lot of threats to whales. So in uh, like the 1970s, commercial whaling was essentially causing a lot of marine mammals, whales, the big ones particularly, to go extinct. A lot of them were on the verge of extinction. And in a way, that was quite a simple problem. Um, you essentially, you've got to stop whaling, and uh, commercial whaling anyway. And thanks to the dedicated efforts of a few people, uh, they did that and they stopped commercial whaling. In, in one way, that was a really simple problem. You know, that's it, you gotta stop whaling. Nowadays, as much as some of the big whales aren't necessarily at risk of immediate extinction, it's a much more complicated situation. So you've got chemical pollution, toxicology, noise pollution, whether it's acoustic bleaching, which is really loud shipping traffic all over the world, seismic exploration, which is um, oil and gas companies looking for fossil fuels beneath the seabed. Uh, military sonar is a big one as well. Oh. Marine debris and litter. Um, if people remember those. Yes. <laughs> we right then. We did that on purpose. <laughs> I'll just keep going until it does, I guess. Can it, people remember that um, the sperm whales that beached on our coast a couple months ago? So they. <laughs> They found plastic in those animals' stomachs, so yeah, it's <laughs> like, ship strikes, habitat loss, and then at the bottom, bycatch and entanglement in commercial fisheries. So obviously, commercial fisheries is a is a <coughs> is a big industry worldwide. I think it's like a sixth of people on the planet either rely on it for food or for their economic well-being. So there's a lot of fishing going on, and there's a lot of bycatch and entanglement. So out of all these threats, which one's the worst? So I, I found this staggering when I first saw this uh, a couple of years ago, commercial fisheries cause more whale, dolphin and porpoise deaths than any other human activity. Uh, it's quite a staggering statistic and when you look at how many species are genuinely threatened with extinction from bycatch, it's, it's pretty intense. So these interactions, not only is, is it happening at the moment, but it's likely to increase rapidly. Human population grows, uh, human technology grows, we're going to be entering new bodies of water which we haven't been able to fish in the past which you know previously have been um, like a, a safe habitat for whales and dolphins and of course the fish and then also another important thing to remember is that humans and marine mammals are both apex predators so essentially we are targeting often the same species as as human fisheries uh, so and then also we often they often associate with the animals that um, humans are fishing uh, humans are, are trying to catch so you know, there was the whole thing about dolphin-friendly tuna. That all came about because the dolphins would swim at the top and the big tuna schools would essentially follow the dolphin 
and you know they would swim underneath them. So the big tuna fishing vessels would find dolphin, put the net, a massive net over all of it, and that's how they would catch the, uh, the fish. So all I'm trying to say is that dolphins often associate with the kind of fish which we are targeting. So it's quite, a, you know, we're coming into direct competition with marine mammals, and it's not a competition you're gonna win. If you come into competition with humans, you're not gonna win. What is the problem? Why, why is this such a big deal? Why are so many, uh, why are so many animals dying? Right, right, just pause for a second. May I have your attention, please? Fire has been reported in the building. Please listen for further instructions. Are you serious? No, it's a joke, because they said it was going to be a test. Oh, this is serious. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Fire has been reported in the building. Please listen for further instructions. I am. Uh, I don't really use it. Andy underscore RGN, I think. Yeah, tweet me. Is that it, I wonder? <laughs> Alright, I'll, uh, I'll go. So yeah, the severity of this threat is realized, but it's kind of shunned by the marine mammal community because there is not an obvious solution. It's an incredibly difficult, uh, difficult problem to try and solve. And perhaps the biggest problem is that we just don't know enough about it. This is a problem which is impacting animals, mainly in the developing world. It's either illegal fishing, um, it's fishing which is unregulated, it's small scale artisanal, I don't know how to pronounce that word, fisheries, you know, local fisheries, and there's just absolutely no reporting. So essentially the, the first question we need to answer is, is this a threat which is going to cause the extinction of marine mammal species in the next five, 10 years? Or is it, you know, if we got 30, 40 years, just how bad is it? And that's, that's one of the main problems, and that's why it's hard to raise funds to, to deal with this kind of problem, is because it's such a difficult problem to solve. So it's really gill nets and drift nets which are a big problem and they are a big problem in, in for other species as well. Number one, they're totally indiscriminate. You hang them at the surface, they hang down, I don't know, 30 meters in the, uh, in the, the water column and anything that swims into them. May I have your attention please? May I have your attention please? Fire has been reported in the building. Please listen for further instructions. Your attention, please. God's sake. May I have your attention? You have attention. <laughs> Fire has been reported in the building. It'd be smooth. <laughs> Can you edit lots of bits out? Is that just... May I have your attention, please? keep going. So one of my friends was recently in the South China Sea uh, on a, it, she actually works for Sea Shepherd, I don't know if anyone's heard of them, but um, they, they've done a lot of uh, anti-illegal fishing activities in the past, um, past couple of years and they found a, uh, a drift net which was, there was five kilometers of it and they pulled it up, the fishing vessels had run off, it was, it was totally illegal and they found I think 300 blue sharks in there, in one net. Um, you know, I know I'm not talking about sharks, there's a blue shark there, or a head, uh, anyway. Um, and lots of dolphins, lots of seals, and yeah, essentially these gill nets and drift nets are totally indiscriminate. They're incredibly cheap, um, which is, you know, obviously a, a good thing for the people who are using them. They're incredibly cost effective, you put it out there, it's catching so much biomass. Uh, they're synthetic, they don't biodegrade, they can get lost, become loose, and become ghost nets, which is, you know, then they're just floating out there, catching whatever. They're made of very thin material, so dolphins and whales, which can often detect other kinds of nets with their echolocation, can't see them, so they just swim straight into them and um, they get caught in them. So yeah, why are they still in use? Well, they are banned in many places. They're banned uh, mainly in the States, in Europe, in the Mediterranean. They still happen in the Mediterranean. There's still a big problem there. But you know, why, if they are such a, a terrible uh, fishing method for for the environment, are they still being used? 
Um, because as I said, it's developing countries, you know, who are we to go to these small scale communities and say, you can't do that. These people don't have the luxury to buy more expensive gear. It's, it's you know, I, I certainly would never feel comfortable going to, I've spent a lot of time in Bangladesh and I, I don't want to go there and say to people, you can't do this anymore. They've, they've got bigger problems to worry about than, you know, they've got their lives to worry about. So that's a, a problem. The government don't have the resources to enforce bans, even if the bans exist. And then also you've got rapid population growth. As population goes up, demand will go up for fish. It's, it's a pretty simple situation. Uh, in 1994, 20 years ago, 3.5 million gill nets in use in China. And yeah, the big problem really is South Asia, almost from, I'd say, I don't know, the, the sort of from Somalia all the way across to Korea and, and China, all along that coast is really the main hotspot for this. And you've got a lot of, especially coastal marine mammals, dolphins and whales, which live along the coasts. And uh, there's no data there. You know, in the States, we've got surveys in the Europe, in Europe, we've got surveys of marine mammals. We know what the population numbers are out there. We don't have a clue what's going on. We just know that it's, it's probably smashing these populations pretty hard. There's also uh, some examples of poor management in Peru. There's a massive fishery off uh, the pelagic fishery, the offshore fishery there. And it's uh, incredibly, uh, it's actually in some ways it's quite well managed, but it's an incredibly productive fishery. And the management authorities banned the use of, I can't remember what species of fish as, as bait. So now they're targeting dolphins to use as bait. And they estimate that they kill about 15,000 dolphins a year, just, just for bait in that one fishery. So. You know, there are lots of things here which, which make this a, a poor situation. So I'm going to talk about a couple of case studies. Uh, number one, the Baiji, I don't know if anyone's heard of that, the, uh, the Chinese river dolphin. So that's extinct. It's the first marine mammal which has gone extinct. Uh, you know, I don't need to tell you what extinction means. It's gone. It's not coming back. Um, that's pretty sad. There are quite a few uh, reasons why it went extinct, essentially rapid industrialization of this body of water which it lived in, but the number one threat, the number one thing which caused it to go extinct is gill nets. Vaquita, I don't know if anyone's heard of that, it's quite a big story at the moment in the marine mammal world. It's the most endangered marine mammal in the world. Uh, it lives in the Sea of Cortez in quite a small, the northern part of the Sea of Cortez. Uh, population estimate is about 80 individuals in this entire species. Again, gill nets is essentially the only threat they face. You know, apart from that, it's, it's quite a well-protected body of water. That It's not big pollution threats or anything like that. It's purely bycatch from uh, the totoaba. Uh, the demand for totoaba is a, totoaba is a kind of fish and there's massive demand for that in East Asia. And yeah, the Kita essentially is, is, it's got a pretty good chance of going extinct. Maui's dolphin and Hector's dolphin off New Zealand. Again, it's the same thing. They, they're coastal animals. They live in quite a small habitat. Uh, there's a big fishery around there and the dolphins are, they're going extinct as well. I think the estimate, esti populate, pop, population estimate for Maui's dolphins is about 50 animals. So it's more endangered than Vaquita. Um, it's not just about species, different populations of species. You know, you've got bottlenose dolphins, which might be doing incredibly well in some areas of the world, but in some areas, their populations are just going to go extinct. Uh, again, it's not just in developing worlds. In the Mediterranean, there's a big problem with sperm whales and striped dolphins. Sperm whales are the big ones. They're about the size of this room. Brings another point up that entanglement in fishing gear is a big issue for the bigger whales. Right whales, grey whales, humpback whales, especially different populations of them. A lot of them, entanglement in fishing gear is, is the number one threat they face. I actually did a quick look a couple days ago to, I was looking at the most endangered marine mammals and the top 10, almost all of them bycatch is the number one threat they face. So whales and dolphins are, you know, I think about half of them are endangered, some of them critically endangered and uh, yeah, bycatch is the number one threat. So what are the solutions? I mean, there are some good solutions. Uh, there are bycatch reduction devices which have been successfully implemented in Australia. Uh, marine mammal protected areas, marine protected areas in New Zealand and elsewhere have been incredibly effective. Uh, bans on certain type of nets. Northern right whale dolphin essentially is back from the brink of extinction because of bans on gill nets in the North Pacific. These are all well and good, but they don't really target the real issue. It's the coastal fisheries around developing countries. How, how do we solve that problem? Again, as I said before, who are we to go to these developing countries and say to the small scale local fisheries, you can't do this anymore. 
And then also if there are bigger scale industrial fisheries which are acting illegally, these countries don't have the resources to, to deal with this problem. Total lack of information. This is a quote from the latest big bycatch report on marine mammals. There is a need for a much wider application of a relatively low cost, rapid approach to bycatch assessment. Am I going back here? In what numbers? Yeah, so it kind of struck me like three, four days ago, this is explicitly the kind of thing which this fish Jackathon, this kind of <laughs> May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Fire has been reported in the building. Please listen for further instructions. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Fire has been reported in the building. Please listen for further instructions. <laughs> it's only two, right? I'll keep going. So yeah, it really genuinely struck me a few days ago, I was just thinking this kind of fish hackathon where you're developing a mobile application which people all around the world can use, this is explicitly the kind of problem, kind of solution, or something in that is a kind of kind of solution to this problem. You know, there are easy solutions to this and with this kind of thing you can create something I haven't got a clue about hacking. I, I can barely use my computer apart from to like play Candy Crush. So this is explicit, you know, if you can reach loads of people, if you can create an app which a lot of people can download, then you can just, it could be an absolute game changer. It's, it was really exciting when I started writing this speech and just thinking about writing this speech. Started thinking about just how good this can be for solving this problem. It genuinely, there aren't solutions to this problem, full stop. This, this is really exciting. Um, that's pretty much it. I think the people at Fish Hackathon around the world have a remarkable opportunity to take enormous steps in, in ensuring the survival of whale and dolphin populations. You know, as I said, bycatch is the number one number one threat to marine mammals in the world. Um, a lot of species are going to go extinct, full stop, because of this threat. One species already has, one's on its way. 80 individuals in an entire species is not a viable population size by any means. Uh, there are a number of other species which are on their way. There are potentially species which haven't been identified, you know, species which might look like another one around certain coasts in, in the developing countries which already might have been lost. This is the kind of thing which we need to, which we need to develop to, to save these animals. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's it. Thank you.